Akit Sid uh, from Fundamental Research. So two weeks ago, we produced a report on copper. If you have not seen that report, uh, make sure you subscribe to our platform, researchfrc.com, and you can access the entire report. So today, what I thought uh, I'll do is uh, I'll share with you our key findings um, of that report on copper. So when it comes to looking at commodities, two things really drive commodity prices, supply and demand. So if you're able to forecast supply and demand of each commodity, you can kind of get an idea about the direction of those um, prices of that commodity. If the supply, mar the market is going to be in a supply deficit, you know that the prices are going to rise. And if the market is going to be a supply surplus, prices are likely to fall. So let's uh, look at the supply and demand fundamentals of copper. Let's start with demand. So copper is also known as uh, Dr. Copper with a PhD in economics. The reason why is that copper, uh, the demand for copper pretty much he uh, helps us get an idea about the overall health of the global economy. Now, copper is used for a wide range of applications ranging from buildings, transportation, e equipment. All the applic primary applications are directly correlated to global GDP growth, which is why we know that by checking copper demand, we know, we kind of get, a, we get an idea about the global health of an economy. Now, in terms of near term uh, demand driver, we think uh, recovery post pandemic will be the number one demand driver for copper. Uh, the global vaccination rates are ramping up. About 25% uh, of the world's uh, population have at least have one dose. Most of the developed uh, economies, um, about 50% or more, are fully vaccinated. So we are expecting a global economic uh, recovery later on in this year. And with that, uh, copper demand should rise as well. Now, in terms of long-term demand, we feel that uh, the main driver will be electric vehicles. Uh, copper is a, a huge component of electric vehicle batteries. About uh, 180 pounds of copper is used in a single electric vehicle. Now, let's look at the total copper demand and see how the electric vehicles come into the picture. So right now, copper demand is about, global copper demand is about 25 million tons uh, a year. And EVs account for less than 1% of the overall uh, demand. Now, with 180 pounds in each vehicle, and EV demand is expected to increase from 3 million vehicles a year to about 30 million vehicles by the end of the decade, which means that copper demand from just from EV is going to grow from under 1% to about 9% of copper total demand. And in terms of tonnage, it's going to grow from 25,000, 25 million tons to 35 million tons by the end of the decade. Now that reflects the growth rate of 3.5% per year versus the historic growth rate of 2.8%. So we are, going to expect, we are expecting a significant increase in demand growth of copper over the next decade. Now let's see if uh, supply can meet this demand growth. Now copper supply primarily comes from Chile and Peru and um, uh, production historically has grown at about 2.6, 2.7% per year over the last 60 years. And we feel that you know, the, the strong growth in demand can be met by supply only if all the, almost all the undeveloped copper projects worldwide are come online or advanced production. Now, for that to happen, we need to make sure that developers are properly incentivized to make sure they spend the capex, they spend uh, uh, cash on exploration development to ensure that their projects are advanced to production. Now, they have, there are, there are, there are two few issues with that. The, one of the key issues with the copper supply market is that copper grades have been on a declining trend over the last uh, 50 years. Just in the last 30 years, grades are down 50% from about 1% to 0.5%, and that has resulted in a significant increase in production cost. So that's affected uh, producers and developers. So unless we see uh, copper prices much higher than production cost, we are not going to see developers advancing their projects. Now let's see what that cost is, and let's see what the incentivized price is. So 
we looked at a lot of uh, corporate projects in development stage and we found that uh, the break-even cost of these projects is at least $2.50 per pound in US and we feel that prices have to be well above at least 20-30% higher which means you're looking at a $3 dollars $3 per pound prices of copper to incentivize these developers to advance their projects. So number one takeaway from this report or from our study is that long-term prices have to be well above $3 to incentivize these developers. The historic copper price um, average is just $1.33. So we expect a significantly higher copper prices going forward. Uh, when it comes to near term prices, we did a study. Uh, we looked at the, the data past uh, 60 years of data and we found that copper prices are actually directly correlated to uh, a year's uh, consumption as well, as well as the supply demand position. We ran the numbers, we built the model, and we found that our, uh, our models gave a near-term copper price, which is 2021 average, of $3.75 per pound, and next year's average, 2022 average, is $3.34 per pound, versus the current historic highs, highs of $4.25. So we do expect prices to correct uh, over the next 12 months, but over the long term, we remain extremely positive on copper projects and more specifically we are positive on companies with solid management companies with advanced stage assets that could be um, that has robust economics because they could be ideal targets for uh, larger players so I want to conclude this video by giving uh, you some of our top ideas take a look at this uh, table here it shows a list of advanced stage copper juniors and also shows their enterprise value to pound. You can see that the average enterprise value to pound is about three cents. And the companies that I've listed in orange, which is at the bottom, are our top ideas for today. They are trading well below the sector average. Uh, at about 1.2 cents per pound is um, Los Andes Copper. They have a large project in Chile. Uh, below that is Panoro Minerals, even more undervalued. They have large projects in Peru, and the third company I want to talk about is Copper Bank, and they have large projects in the U.S. So with that, um, that kind of summarizes uh, our copper report. As I mentioned earlier, if you have not seen that report, make sure you subscribe and check out our platform, researchfrc.com. And as always, if you like these videos, please encourage us, give us a like and subscribe. Thank you and stay safe.